Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today, I want to talk about the E2CF by Race3D. As usual for these webinars, if you do have any questions or comments during the live webinar, please leave them in the chat and my colleague will do his best to answer you uh, during the webinar. I won't because, well, I'm standing here talking. Or if you're watching a recording of this, just leave a comment below the video and then we'll do our best to answer there. Uh, other than that, I am Sven, and uh, today I'll be talking about this machine right here. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. So, the Race 3D E2CF. It is based on the Race 3D E2, a printer they've been selling for a while, and it looks almost the same, so it's very easy to see the similarities. And then, in its name, it says CF. That already gives us an indication what this machine is for. It's for fiber-filled filaments carbon fiber. Um, so this printer is specifically designed to print materials such as nylon with carbon fiber inside, so PA12CF or PPACF or PPAGF with glass fibers. That also works. So that's what this printer is specifically designed for. It is not designed to print PLA or ABS or any of those other ones. Unlike the other Race3D printers, the Race3D E2CF is a closed system. The idea maker software that comes with the printer is very limited in the amount of options it gives you. And we'll have a look at that later. I've got my laptop right here and we'll have a look at the software later. I'll switch the screens then so you can see what is actually available inside the software. But it is important to note that if you're aiming to print PLA or ABS or PTG, this is not the printer for you. Go for the Race 3D E2. If you want to print PPA, CF, or carbon fiber filled PTG, then this is the printer for you. That's exactly what this one is for, okay? So now that we've got that off uh, the bat, um, let's talk a little bit about the printer. As I said, it's based on the Race 3D E2. That means it's got a bunch of similarities, and it's not just that they have the same frame. It is also that they have the same doors, they both have door sensors, they both have a HEPA filter, they've got uh, recovery after power loss, they've got a Z probe for automatic leveling, they've got uh, a flexible steel build plate with a build tech surface on top so it's very easy to get parts off it. It has an IDEX system so you can print with duplication or mirror mode. It has the same display uh, with the same uh, or very similar menus as the E2. Um, what else? Yeah, most of the things are very similar. You can connect it via Wi-Fi. The slicing software is actually the same. It's still IdeaMaker, but for this printer, IdeaMaker just doesn't give you as many options. Um, now, one of the key differences, aside from the nice little red accents, is that there are no more filament bays on the side of the printer. Now, on the E2, you would have a little plastic door that you could open and store your filament in. Not the case here anymore. Instead, this is now a solid metal wall on the side, and we've got these little suitcases. These are your filament storage, and you get two of them included with a printer. So they come with a printer. You don't need to buy these separately. And essentially, these are dry boxes, because most of the filaments that are fiber filled and that you would print on this machine, such as PA12CF, are hygroscopic, meaning they absorb moisture from the air. And that's bad because once they've absorbed too much moisture, you will get bad print results and need to dry the filament before printing. So instead, you get these little suitcases to keep your filament nice and dry inside. And we'll open this one up to have a look. So if I open it up, we see we've got this um, system to put the spool on top of. I'm missing my word right now, but that'll be okay. And uh, you can see there's another one of those on the bottom. Um, so you put the spool on top of this, and then when closing, this one covers it from the top. And that just guarantees that the spool has a nice, smooth operation. There are um, ball bearings inside to guarantee that it rolls quite nicely. Um, and then you've got two of these little pockets here on the side to put silicate inside in order to make sure that the humidity inside the box stays nice and low. Gonna, there we go, close that up again. So that's what the filament box looks like from the inside. Let me close it back up. And that allows you to keep a low humidity environment for your filament while printing. 
It is then connected via a little PTFE tube to the printer and then goes directly into the uh, extruder. So the filament is never exposed to the open air on the way to printing. Um, next up, of course, we have the extruders because in order to sustainably or reliably print fiber filled filaments, the extruders had to be completely redesigned from the ground up. If you open one of these up, and compared to the inside of an extruder on the Race 3D E2, they look completely different. On the Race 3D E2, the filament would be uh, pulled and pushed by a single uh, gear wheel and one flat one. You know, the so single extrusion, uh, single gear extrusion. On this one, it's a dual gear extrusion with both gears made from hardened materials to guarantee that the abrasive fiber filled filaments don't wear it down too quickly. So this printhead is specifically designed to resist the wear and tear that comes with the abrasive materials and just last longer in continued operation. In addition, they use special nozzles, tungsten, carbide, or silicon carbide. And those are supposed to be cheaper than the ruby nozzles and live longer. I can't verify that claim yet because I haven't printed enough with it, but it seems like it might work. Um, even if they don't last longer, if they're cheaper, that's already good enough for me. So that's what they're uh, looking at with these printers. And uh, they've completely redesigned the print heads, which means that they're not interchangeable with the Race 3D E2. And there's something in the firmware, as far as I know, that doesn't allow you to put these into an E2. So that doesn't work. There's no upgrade kit for the E2 either. You have to have the Race 3D E2CF if you want to benefit from all these small changes. Um, so yeah, both the E2 and the E2CF have their right to be, essentially. This one is for the fiber filled filaments and the other one is for the normal filaments. Don't use this one to print PLA and ABS. It does not work. Why does it not work? Well, we're going to have a look at the slicing software idea maker next and have a look at exactly what options are enabled there. And that will give us a clear picture of why this one cannot print those regular materials, but is excellently suited to the fiber filled filaments. So let's get right into it. So now that we're in the idea maker slicer, I've already set the printer to the E2CF. Now I need to import a model. I'm just going to choose a random one. The model doesn't really matter a whole lot because what I actually want to look at are the slice profiles. And now in these in this slice profile overview, normally you have this drop down with all the materials that you can select and in brackets after the, the material name, it tells you how many profiles exist for that material. But we can see there's no profiles for ABS, no profiles for PLA or PC or TPU. Instead, I only have three uh, profiles for the PA12CF, one profile for the PPA with carbon fiber and one profile for the PPA with glass fiber. That's it. There's no more. You can see I have three different ones for the PA12CF, a standard, a high quality, and a speed one. The main thing that changes is the layer height. I could try and create a new profile, but if I do that and I have the E2CF selected, well, my drop down menu only allows me these three filaments, nothing else. The template also that it's based on would be the same one. I can also try and duplicate one of these to then mess around with some of the settings. I'm just going to name it test one so we can edit it. And here I have a bunch of options such as the layer height, the extrusion width, my infill pattern, all of these things that I'm used to from the idea maker software. But where normally idea maker is completely open and lets you modify just about any parameter that you want here, it is actually somewhat limited. My flow rate, for example, I cannot change it. Neither for the first layer, I can't change it for the infill, I can't change it for the top and bottom solid fill. These things are just locked down by Race 3D in this software. And most important, the temperature is locked. So I cannot modify the temperature of my extruders or of my heated bed. In that way, it is completely locked down and limited by Race 3D. Now you can like this, you can hate this, I'm not going to judge at this point. This is up to you. You have to, to decide whether you like or hate or whatever. Um, it is just the decision they have made. And it's a trade off between the, uh, the uh, liberty of the user to change any settings that they want and the guarantee that your part should come out mostly perfect 
without any possibility of messing it up. Yeah, so it's just a more locked down approach than we were used to from Race 3D, but it's the route they've taken. Um, just to show real quick, of course, I can also select the PPA CF along with the PPA support, and then I can slice using this profile. Upload it to my printer, print as normal. So that's what Idea Maker looks like for the E2CF. I haven't found any workarounds to this locked down uh, system. You cannot import profiles. Uh, you cannot trick the, the printer in any other way so far. Um, so it's just the way it is. That's all I had to show you today. I hope you found the video interesting. If you do have any more questions or comments, well, please leave a comment below the video. Um, thank you for watching this webinar. Uh, it's all I had to tell you and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you again next time if you are interested in more webinars surrounding 3D printing and scanning or just regular videos, consider subscribing to the channel. So thank you very much for being here and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.